everyone, and welcome to The Dose of Bliss Show. I'm your host, Lindsay Hoffman, and today we're gonna get right to it. I'm really excited. We have celebrity photographer, David Christopher Lee. Hi. Yay, <laughs> I always do like a little clap. I'm so excited you're here today because you not only are a celebrity photographer, but you're also the editor-in-chief of Destination Luxury Magazine. And you know, you've worked with celebrities like Jaden Smith, Bella Thorne, the Eastwoods. I mean, pretty much every single in the world, every single person in the world, you're, you hang out with Richard Branson. You've <laughs> lived a life of luxury. So I thought, why not talk today how to manifest luxury and, and abundance and what you did to do that? Okay. So we were talking a while back and you brought up like your definition of luxury, which I thought was different. So what is your definition of luxury? So traditionally, luxury was a term that it's been used all over time, but the definition has definitely changed. In the 80s and the 90s, there was a show called Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. So that was the epitome of luxury. Luxury was mega mansions, private jets, yachts, just things that were very, very expensive. And while, you know, I agree those are really amazing things, the definition has shifted. Today, the definition of luxury, or my definition of luxury, has changed into experiences and just living your best life. So there's a couple things about it. First of all, to live a luxurious lifestyle, you need to be healthy. It's all about your, your mental health, your physical health, and um, being able to think clearly so that you could achieve your goals and live your dreams. Um, now, the definition of luxury, it's all about experiences and doing things that you enjoy and doing them well. Mm -hmm. And how'd you come to that conclusion? Like, was there a time where you thought, okay, it's, I mean, obviously, yes, we like diamonds, they're luxurious, we like massages, you know, the fancy life that's luxurious. Was there a time where you were more focused on the material of it and what, change to that conclusion for yourself of it being an experience? Well, growing up and watching that show, Lifestyles of the Rich and Fam Famous, I always thought luxury was expensive. But as I, as I got older and I was exposed to more things, I realized that, you know, sometimes there could be really expensive things, but there can be people that you don't necessarily vibe with or you don't really enjoy hanging out with. And so I think, to me, luxury is, it's just being around the people that you like so that you can inspire each other and you get bigger and better and you, you do things together. Mm -hmm. And that's what I find is interesting about you as well. And what I've noticed working in the entertainment industry is people at the top of their game like you, working with the biggest celebrities in the world, you wouldn't think that you'd be so down to earth and <laughs> nice, you know? And that's really what attracts working with these kinds of people. So how did you manifest this life, like to have your dream? You know, was there, were you thinking this when you're little and planning this, future for yourself or how did this happen? Well, I learned about manifestation at a very, very young age and I, I don't know what happened, but I just decided to do it myself. So there was, I was six years old and I, my family was collecting coins. So we would go to all these coin shows and my parents would buy these coins and dollars and, and, and that's what happened. And then um, I was watching the news and they were talking about this coin show that was coming up there was this rare penny, the rarest penny in the world. It's a 1914D penny. And I don't know what, what came over me, but as I was watching it, I knew that the, the coin show was coming up and we were going to it. And for some reason, I knew that I was going to get that penny because at all the coin shows, there's always a giant table with all these worthless coins from all around the world. And all the kids go there and they look, at, they look for pennies and whatever they can find. So we go to the coin show. I tell my parents, oh, let's go to that table. I just, I just had this, this urge and this, this yearning to find this penny. So I kept on thinking it and thinking it and thinking it leading up to the show, which was about a week. So I'm at the table and I'm searching for it. And my parents are, my, my parents are telling me after an hour, they're, they're, they said, <laughs> okay, it's time. Okay. It's time to go. Let's go somewhere else. And I said, oh no, don't worry. I, I'm still looking for this penny. And then another hour passes and they keep on saying, let's go, let's go, let's go. And they're saying, what are you doing? And I said, I'm looking for this penny, this 1914D penny. And they still wouldn't, they, they didn't understand what I was talking about. And so 1914D is World War I, and the D is for Denver. And um, at that time, all the, 
the bullets, the copper was used for bullets, so this is a, a steel penny. So this is, they barely made in any of them, and it's one of the only steel pennies. Um, but after about three and a half hours, I thought, I, I saw it, and I, I saw the penny, and there was this little, like, this little D that I could barely see. I thought it was a D, and I, I thought I found the penny. And then I told my parents, and then we went to the microscopes, and one guy, he said, yeah, that's the 1914D penny. And then the other guy said, yes, that's the 1914D penny. And then the other guy said it too. So I actually found that penny out of nothing. Yeah, that's crazy. And why was it at the kids' table? Like, out of all places, I mean, it just happened to be there. Yeah. And so how did that change your perspective? Because I've had experiences like that as well. I think people watching, if they watch my show or my channel, they either want to have these experiences or they have. How did that shape your life? I just knew that the mind was very powerful and that whatever I wanted, I could achieve it. All, all it takes is just shifting your mind and your brain to attract that energy that you want and eventually it will happen. Mm -hmm. And it might not be as fast as this thing that happened to me, but you know, I was young and I got lucky. Yeah, so. and I think also you could rationalize it for people who don't believe in manifestation is you knew what you were looking for. Yeah. When you manifest something, you know kind of what you want. You think about how you're going to do it. So it's really, really smart of you as a child to think, well, I'm going to this thing. I found this penny that's really rare. Let me make sure I know what it looks like because I can find it. It's probably there. I mean, it makes sense. And if I look for it, other people aren't looking for it. People could have sifted through it, didn't know what it was. Like You're, you're like a six-year-old, you know? Of course. And adults too, mm -hmm. even though this is like a trade show. If you don't know that that's what you're looking for, you're just like, this is a random penny, whatever. Like, there's lots of old pennies that you think are rare, but they're not. So it's like, you put the intent, intent out there and you did the work to know that there was like a very possible possibility that it could be there. For sure. Which is crazy. So how does that translate then from as a child to a celebrity photographer hanging out with Richard Branson, Jaden Smith, like everyone? So from that experience, I knew that you know, another another goal that I had when I was little was playing with the um, with the orchestra, as um, playing piano with the orchestra concertos, and I just kept on practicing and practicing and practicing. And when I was um, when I was in high school, I actually was able to play with the USC orchestra. So I did a Bach concerto, I did a Shostakovich concerto, I did a, a Rachmaninoff concerto, and that was just the biggest one of the biggest brushes I've ever had in my whole entire life. Um, yeah, you, you just really have to put your mind to it. You have to practice. You have to keep on doing the work, and eventually it's going to happen. And then for now, I, I am doing all these things with celebrities. I always knew that I wanted to, I wanted to be in the limelight. I wanted to be in the scene. I wanted to go to the award shows. I wanted to go to the parties because it was just so interesting the way you know, to see all these productions, to be around celebrities, to meet interesting people. And when I was 17, I decided that I wanted to go to the Teen Choice Awards. So this was 1999, and I called Seventeen Magazine, and I asked if I could cover the Teen Choice Awards for my high school newspaper. And the publicist said that, you know, she was at the Seventeen Magazine office, and she, she was just shocked because she's never had a kid call and ask to go to the Teen Choice Awards. So she put me on hold, and then she announced to the room that there was this kid on the line that wanted to cover the Teen Choice Awards for his high school newspaper. And then everybody started laughing, and then the publisher was there and said, just let him in. It'd be good to have somebody young covering the show. So they, they let me into the awards, and that was just... That was so surreal to me because that was the first award show I've ever been to. I was 17. I remember I was wearing an orange Quicksilver t-shirt. I had glasses, I had spiky hair. Yeah, that was the time. Yeah, <laughs> and, um, and, and then Britney Spears was over there, NSYNC was, was there, Most Backstreet Boys. It was so much fun. And the publicist, so so I brought my dad's digital camera. It was a Nikon Coolpix 950. At that time, everybody was shooting with film. So, so um, 2.1 megapixels also. Back then. <laughs> yeah, back then. So um, the publicist asked me to take two pictures for her. 
one of InSync with the publisher and one of Britney with the publisher. And she said that she would give me $1,200 for each That's picture. That's insane. At 17. Yeah, at 17. But the, the catch was I had to get her th those pictures that night. So I um, once I got home, I emailed the pictures on a 56K modem, which took probably Forever. about three or four hours. And then I got my check and I got paid. And that was how I, I started getting into the business. But that day she gave me an all access pass and I followed her around the whole entire award show. I was taking red carpet pictures. I was in the green room. I was in the, in the awards. I was, I was everywhere. So It sounds like, like one of the movies. And what sticks out to me, though, is how you manifested it. You just picked up the phone and called yeah. the magazine. How did you even find their number? Was I, just, I don't even know how did you do that back then. Did you, <laughs> could you Google it? There wasn't Google then. No, so there's no know. Google. So you have to call information, 411, and then you ask for 17 Magazine in New York. And then you call 17 Magazine and you ask for the PR department. That's and that's, that's how I got through. And you thought to do that. Yeah. And most 17-year-olds wouldn't think to do that. You know. <laughs> Funny enough, though, I did call MTV when I was 16 to be on my Super Sweet 16, and they actually called me back, too. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's like... That's the thing. Maybe that's probably why we're working in a similar industry and have gotten the opportunities we have because because you found that penny, because you realized at a young age that there kind of was a way to crack the code. Like if you really believed in yourself and put some effort to it, there was a chance you something would happen. So you thought, why not call? What do I have to lose? Like nothing. They answered and it happened. And then they gave because you were there, because you took the opportunity and they could tell you were trying. They give you more opportunities. It's like, as an adult looking back, you're kind of like, maybe it was a test. Could he get these pictures of NSYNC? Like, could he send it to me tonight? <laughs> you know? Some people don't do that. Of course. And you took that up, and it led you to manifesting a life of abundance, success, and also happiness, you know? Mm -hmm. And so how did you not get, like, sweet off that, that track? You know, because a lot of people in L.A. or who like luxury or I call it, like, shiny things. I, I love shiny things, but... You can get distracted, you know, when you're around all these people. How did you not? Well, it's all about creating good work and following your passion. And mine was photography. So I, I made sure to, well, at that time, I barely knew anything about photography. But I, I read so many books. I tried so many different things. And I made sure that whatever I said to people that I could deliver. So it really is about follow through. And by following through with the things that you say that you're going to do, you start building a reputation. And the longer you build it, the easier things get because mm -hmm. people know that you're not a risk. Mm -hmm. You're there to, to do your job and you're reliable. Mm -hmm. And after working in this industry for so many years now, what do you notice about the people you work with like at the top? Like, do they vibrate on that same freq uh, frequency as you? Because earlier you were saying luxury is also about being around people you that make you feel good about yourself, you know, and there are those people that don't. So what do you, do you notice at the top that most of the people are more positive? Yeah, for sure. For sure. But, you know, there's, there are people at the top that are negative too, but it's just not my, not my thing. So I kind of stay away from them. Yeah. And, and you choose to, and how do you, like, how do those people make you feel versus how the good people, like, how can you spot it? It's just the vibe and the energy that you get from somebody. You feel, you feel the feeling of, abundance and nurturing and care. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing like that when you're hanging out with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I feel that too. And that's the people surround yourself. So what are like, do you have like three tips of like how to focus on that? Like not get wrapped up in the, you know, cause this is all about abundance and luxury. Don't get wrapped up in the ego of it. What are your tips for that? Well, to not get wrapped up, you really have to stay grounded and you need to you need to come up with a strategy where you're focused and you need to think about what your goals are and do everything in it, everything that you need to do to achieve these goals. So for me, my um, you know, my my craft was photography. So I knew that I had to become good at photography. I got lucky when I first started at the Teen Choice Awards. But that was never going to be sustain, sustainable if I didn't, I didn't keep on learning and learning and learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the way you do it, and that's how you kind of decipher it. And also, I think it's also realizing that no matter how good you are, to keep learning and being. And that's what I notice in Hollywood and at these. I, I think I might have met you at a luxurious event. I don't even know. <laughs> but that's what I notice at those things is you're 
the people who are at the top are always striving to be better, you know? Like, they're not, like... It's a sense of I deserve to to be here, but I work to be here and I work to always be better. It's not like a, I deserve this, like, why didn't I get what I want? It's, if we didn't don't get what we want, we'd just say, oh, how can I be a better person? But you also have to realize that when you go on your path of manifestation, you're going to get a lot of no's. You're going to have a lot of adversity and struggles, but you have to deal with it. Mm-hmm. And how? what is your tip for that, dealing with it? Besides for just you know, keep working. Well, first of all, don't, don't be, don't be afraid to ask for something because the worst that people can say is no. Mm -hmm. And you're going to get a lot of no's. So just be ready for that. Yeah. Just like, I always say like, put your blinders on, like the no's are outside the blinders, but my vision is there. Stay on, stay on the vision. Like, you know, if you feel like you get knocked down, keep going. Cause then you end up like you. Yeah. But your vision is always different Your vision is your vision. Your vision is not their vision. So you can't expect everybody to be supportive of what you're doing (laughs) because what you're doing is probably a little bit different from what everybody else is. And you have to fight through that, and that's how you get there. We only have a few minutes left, so before we say where everyone can find you, is there anything else that you wanted to add about manifesting luxury, abundance, or a message to the world? Um, So for me, I've, I've worked with so many different philanthropy, philanthropic organizations. And now I'm doing a project with the Environmental Media Association where I'm taking portraits of many of the people that I've already shot and some other ones. And um, each page is going to have a quote about the environment. And so it's benefiting the Environmental Media Association and it's going to be incredible. That's so cool. And I like to, what's interesting is having the quote, that's even a form of manifestation, of manifestation of in your own way of like a better environment and of like a better world. And I think that's just what you make me think about what you do is everything you have. There's like a form of like your next manifestation and like goal. But yeah, thank you so much for being here. Can you tell everybody where they can find you? Oh, so go to... Look at the camera over here. (laughs) Go to at David C. Lee Photography. That's David with the letter C and then L-E-E Photography. You guys are going to be blown away by everything he has accomplished. I mean... Just hearing these stories have, like, inspired me. I didn't even know the story about the penny, about anything. And I, like, it's just, like, magic. And I really like it. I really appreciate you for coming here today. Thank you guys for watching this show today. If you want to watch all the episodes on demand, you can go to the EverTalk TV app. It's always there on demand. Otherwise, you can see it on my YouTube channel every single Thursday. Hit that subscribe button. Give it a thumbs up and comment below. And, of course, follow me at Lindsay B. Hoffman. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.